Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Welcome to you gathered with me in this room, and welcome to you gathered with me over Facebook Live or over KDX Radio. We are so glad that you found this place this morning. The bulletin is on the Facebook comments. You can click that to follow along. We serve communion today, every time we worship. So if you'd like to gather some bread and juice or wine, you can be a part of that meal. You are welcome at the Lord's table for Holy Communion. If this is the first time you've been here, communion is a time we gather to remember that we worship not just with the people who are here now, but with also the saints who have gone before us at that meal. Let's prepare our hearts and our minds for worship, so I invite you to take a moment, take a breath, and say a prayer as we prepare. The call to worship is based on the first psalm. You can join in the bold print. Happy are we when we delight in God's word. We are like trees planted by living water. Let us meditate on God's law and gospel and bear good fruit in its due season. The gospel reading you'll hear today is the Beatitudes, and Jesus in those words sort of equalizes everybody. So some of you have come here with deep grief in your heart, some of you have come here with great joys in your life, some of you come here with one set of worries, and the rest of us come here with different sets of worries. So the waters of baptism, like Jesus' words, make us all one in Christ. So no matter how you've come here, how your spirit is this morning, Jesus has words and water of blessing just for you. After a moment of reflection, reflection, we confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. Let us pray. Merciful God, Christ came into the world and showed us how to live, but we have failed to live by what he taught We have not loved you with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. We have not done to others as we would have done to ourselves. Shine a light on our hearts that we might turn from the shadows of our sin and walk in your ways. These are words of forgiveness and freedom meant to set you free from all of those old words in your head. Jesus came not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. By his abundant love, your sins are forgiven, that you might walk in the light of Christ. Amen. Please stand and join in singing, Gather Us In.
tricky to sing, so I encourage you to grab the larger of the two red books in front of you if you want to see the notes. That makes it a little bit easier if you can see the notes go up or down. Toward the front of the book on page 167, where the numbers are on the bottom, you'll find the glory to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Loving God, in Jesus you proclaim a blessing for those in deprivation, a promise of your transforming love. Make us instruments of your justice that all might have life abundantly. Amen. Welcome once again to those worshiping from different places. Your assisting minister today is Patrick Healy, and your preacher is your faith formation director, Christina Jorgensen. Please stand as you may as we sing the gospel acclamation and hear the story. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Well, good morning, everybody. I would love to share with you a little um, about myself. And one fun fact about me is that I love doing puzzles. Anybody else? I see some hands. That's really great. I know some of us might like to do the cityscapes, the landscapes. I hear there's some picture-in-picture ones out there that are a little bit more challenging. But I know for a while now I've really enjoyed doing puzzles. Um, I like spending time with my family, usually while watching football, to take out the puzzle table and work on one we haven't done for a while. Um, We had a bit of a hiatus of doing puzzles for some of my life as my kids were really too small and we were worried they would be too helpful. Um, But most recently here we've had a few snow days to get back into the puzzle spirit and we found it pretty refreshing to do that and have the help of our kids. Our five-year-old has actually been pretty helpful, for real, and impressive, and getting those last pieces together has really been fun for her. Now, I don't know exactly what it is. I don't know why I love doing puzzles as much as I do. It's possible that it's just a mindless way to spend a day that's not quite like watching reality TV. It's a little bit better than um, spending time together, you know, with my family. Maybe it's the challenge of sorting the pieces and putting them together in the piles of the color. Okay, who am I kidding? I know that's not my favorite part. (laughs) Nobody really likes the sorting part, but um, truly it's really satisfying when you're done putting the puzzle together and you can see the picture and it looks just like it's supposed to. It's a picture perfect ending every time. It looks just like the box. It's great. Many times throughout our lives, we have things that we work on. It might not always be a puzzle, 
but we're always working towards something and hoping to have a picture-perfect ending. Whether you're in school and working on a book report or a presentation of sorts, maybe you're building a home or you're even just trying to take a family photo, whatever it is you're working on, more often than not, we're working towards something. And we know that in order to complete a project, there are certain steps you have to take a certain way to get the end result. So it's perfection and you could show it off to everybody, right? Like you can't start putting the pieces of a puzzle together in any order. Everyone knows you have to start with the border, the outline, and you have to find all the ones that have the same matching sides that fit together nicely. And you surely can't finish a puzzle if there's pieces missing. I know, it would just be awful. But if it's a book report, right? If you're working on a book report, you have to actually read the book first. If it's a presentation, you have a start and a finish. If you're building a house, you pour the foundation before you build the walls. And if you're going to take a family photo, you hope everybody's looking the same direction and maybe smiling. Kudos to all of you who get your dog in the photo to do the same. Well done. But what happens? What happens if you don't have all those pieces coming together? What happens if your project has taken a detour or delays and things aren't happening as you once expected? And what happens if your puzzle is spilled in the closet before you even try to begin? Can you even hope to create something presentable to show off to others when it's done? I don't know, but I do know that in our gospel reading today, we heard a text known as the Beatitudes, and in these words, we hear many blessings. Many pieces of these words come together, and in the book of Matthew, this is relatively early on in Jesus' earthly ministry. Just after he was tempted in the wilderness last week that we heard about, Jesus calls the first disciples, and then he begins preaching and teaching and his fame must be spreading quickly because the next stop is here, where Jesus meets people on a mountain. And a whole crowd of people gather from all over just to listen to him speak. I would assume people in this crowd are coming from all walks of life, and I would assume that many of them didn't have all the pieces of their lives coming together. Yet on this mountain, he, ex he explains why people are blessed. Maybe you've heard the phrase or the words thankful, grateful, and blessed. Maybe you've said it. Maybe it's even on a sign somewhere in your home. It's a great reminder to be thankful and grateful and blessed for all the things that we have and all the ways that we are blessed and things that we should be thankful for. But more often than not, we consider blessings as stuff or as happiness that we can earn and piece together on our own. We often feel blessed when all is well. Maybe when we and our loved ones are happy and healthy, or our bellies are full, or our home is cozy. Maybe you feel blessed when you receive a promotion at work, or a great score on a test, or if you have something new to show off to others that prove that you're getting all your pieces together correctly. I'm not here to tell you you're wrong, because those are all great reasons to feel thankful and grateful and blessed. But I am going to say that that might not be exactly how Jesus imagines our blessedness. From the very beginning of his ministry, Jesus started flipping our expectations upside down and in these words. Jesus knows that what we expect of ourselves and what we expect of others is usually the new stuff, the high honors, and perfection. But when it comes to the ways that we are blessed, Jesus said what we might not have expected. You could say in that in the puzzle of life, we expect all of those pieces will come together and fit nicely, and the picture will look full and perfect at the end. Not exactly what Jesus thinks. So in our world, then and now, people admired great power and fortunes, but Jesus did not say, blessed are the rich and powerful. People look to others who appear beautiful and healthy, and we know that Jesus did not say, blessed are the Instagram models and the influencers. We idolize those who say the right words and are confident in their beliefs, but Jesus did not say, blessed are the ones who've never second-guessed. This is kind of a fun game, maybe a little bit dangerous of a game to continue saying the things that Jesus did not say, but here's just a couple more. 
Jesus did not say, blessed are the ones who know every book of the Bible. Jesus did not say, blessed are the ones who have the newest iPhone, the fastest car, and the biggest house. Jesus did not say, blessed are they who have it all together. Jesus did not say, blessed are those who made the honor roll or the varsity team or won their fantasy football league this year. Just saying I would be happy to say I won my fantasy football league this year, but I didn't. That's okay. Jesus did not say, blessed are those whose Christmas card has the best smiles. No, Jesus did not say those things. Jesus was God, but yet fully human. And Jesus understood what it meant to have bad days and hard seasons of life. Jesus felt pain and suffering just like we do. Jesus knew that fighting for justice and working towards peace is not easy. Jesus knew that the people around him were faced with hard things. They were sinners, they were outcasts, they were liars, they were greedy, they were ashamed. And Jesus knew that there might be pieces that didn't fit together. He knew that there were pieces of their lives that might be missing and pieces and people that didn't have a place. So he met them on the mountain and he did say these things. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the humble for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. And blessed are you when people persecute you for believing in me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. Now, Jesus is reminding people who have ever been any of these things or felt any of these ways that they are blessed. He's telling you that you're blessed in it all. Not just in the future, but here and now. Whether you have all the pieces of your puzzle together, or if they're messy, or if they're just sorted in piles and sitting there for a long time, or if they're in the wrong spots, or if you're missing a few, or if they're upside down or right side up, blessed are you. Blessed are you who mourn, you who are poor in spirit, meek and humble, you who yearn for justice, you the compassionate, and you the peacemakers. Blessed are you. And even so, you hear these blessings. Sometimes it can still be hard to see the ways that you might be blessed. It's not always easy to feel blessed, especially when you're suffering or when you're working really hard at getting things in order or if you're missing something. Many days it can be easier to count the things that go wrong instead of the things that go right. But even on those days, you are blessed abundantly. Not because of what you did or what you didn't do, but because of Jesus. Your puzzle doesn't have to be complete. When you hear, blessed are they, may you hear, blessed are you. For all the ways you don't feel like you're enough, Jesus meets you wherever you are. Jesus meets you with grace and mercy, just as Jesus met the people on the mountain that day. So again, if your life is a puzzle in progress, and it takes a lot of work to get those pieces together just right, and sometimes you might be missing some, Sometimes you don't know where they're at. Wherever they are, right now, Jesus meets you, Jesus meets us with grace and mercy, blessing us in the midst of a busy and messy life. But that's not it. After all these blessings, Jesus has more to say. There's something that Jesus is calling us to do about it. So following all the blessings that challenge our expectations about who deserves to be blessed and and what to do about it, Jesus talks about salt and light. There's some profound words kind of tucked into the end of our text for today, but it closes with Jesus saying, you are the light of the world. Shine your light before others so they may see your good works and give glory to God in heaven. Jesus doesn't tell you, fix your mess, work harder, get all the right and perfect and beautiful pieces together before it's meaningful. No, Jesus does tell us that whatever, wherever, however your puzzle may be, it will shine just as it is. You have a unique picture and a unique story to share. And know that God is with you in it. So go, blessed ones. Share your puzzle and share your light. 
Let it be a blessing to others so that all may know God's goodness and grace. Amen. church around the world, let us join in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident that our Savior, Jesus Christ, hears us when we pray. We pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of each new day, you promise a blessing upon those who live in war-torn parts of the world. We beg for peace in Ukraine, for our neighbors far away to receive the blessing of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of abundant mercy, pour your blessing upon our nation as we face the tragedy of another mass shooting. Dry the tears of those who grieve in Los Angeles and make us instruments of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our prayer. prayer. Heal the harm we have done to your creation. Keep us from being careless as we accumulate possessions and fill up landfills. Teach us to buy and use only what we need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Keep elected leaders focused on the needs of those they serve, that they might work for the blessing of all people. We pray for North Dakota legislators, including Mike LaFour, Dean Rummel, and Vicki Steiner. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Blessed are the congregations as you guide them through the pastoral call process, and blessed is the one who will say yes to the call at St. John. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Your blessing is for all who suffer, O God. Grant healing and wholeness to those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit. Especially, we pray, for Arnold Chalk, Joe Warner, Marcia Frank, Sharon Cattermas, and Gordy Cattermas. We pray for Larry and Leon Markison as they grieve the death of their brother, James. Lord, in your mercy, hear Lord, our Lord. prayer. We remember with joy all the saints whose lives have been a source of incredible blessing. May we, in gratitude, bless others until we are all together in your eternal presence. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and hold all for whom we pray in your loving arms. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you may. The peace of Christ be with you always. Share a sign of Christ's peace in the room and online. continue with the offering. A great thanks to Mackenzie Hicks for sharing the offering of music. She's been here for both services. She's going to sing to you the Beatitudes, the words that you heard in the gospel.
Please stand as you may and join in singing as the gifts are brought to the table. Let us pray. You have planted us by streams of water, O God, that we might bear good fruit. We offer now these gifts that they would be that good fruit given for the sake of your children throughout the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power. Jesus, nothing is as we expect. He turns everything on its head. He proclaims blessing for those we would see as the furthest from it. He gives hope to a world in need. Thus, we ask that God would make us need and that we would hunger and thirst for righteousness, that we would be merciful and pure of heart, that we would be peacemakers that we would always strive to do the work God has called us to do, even when that work is unpopular. Let us be open to God's truth in the world, then we shall be blessed. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. 
As you are welcome at this meal. You can come up the center aisle just following the people in front of you and fill in the rail from the end of the center. Stand or kneel and go back to your seat up the side aisle. If you're worshiping online, we encourage you to exchange the bread and wine. If you happen to be alone, then hear these words that are just for you. This is the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Have you ever gotten to the end of the puzzle and realized you're missing a piece or two? Anybody? Only to realize the dog or the child ate it and it's gone forever. Well, you're missing some pieces in your life. As people of God, we don't hope for a picture-perfect life because we live in this broken world and we are broken people, broken by grief or addiction or the big and little disappointments of our lives. So we come to this table for those missing pieces, for some pieces of mercy and a little bit of bread and some little sips of wine or juice. At this table, you remember Christ became broken to make you whole. So come to this table and feast on the mercy of Christ so you may leave this world full of mercy that is for the world. Come as you are.
receive this blessing, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his blood and body strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Lots of announcements in your bulletin you can take home with you. You can always find them on the church website. Right after this service, we're having a pre-annual meeting. If you'd like to stick around and if you have any questions uh, about the last year, by now you should have received an email on Friday with all of the reports for the annual meeting, all of the financial and congregational reports and the ballot with the names of the people in your bulletin you did not receive that email on Friday and you're a member of St. John, call the office tomorrow so we make sure we got your address correct. Next week is our annual meeting at 1030 in the basement. So I always look forward to the annual meetings. It's a great time to tell you all the things God has been up to. This is a big place, so you can't really see all of the pieces of it, but we have lots of great stories to tell you next week. There will also be a little bit of breakfast for you at that service as a fundraiser for the high school mission trip. It's a big day for our high school youth because they're going to learn a bit more about the mission trip this summer that Christina, your faith formation director, will take them on. So we pray for you and we pray for these students as they get to know a little bit more today. It's a very exciting day. If you are worshiping on Facebook and you want to be part of the annual meeting next week because you're a member of St. John, you can join that meeting over Zoom. Just call the office this week. We'll make sure you got the link and everything you need to join that meeting over your computer. Please stand as you may for one more blessing. God who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in now and forever. Amen. Our sending him, go make disciples. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God.